Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Remember when web development used to be so fun? Most of you are like, when? It was never fun. So today's episode is going to be about 3D. We're going to create an interactive animated website using Spline and Blender. Oh, look at that. We also have a sponsor for today. Brilliant. So the first step is to get a good open source 3D modeling software and Blender is fantastic for that. It's free as well, so you can just hit download. And once you open that up, you're gonna be presented with this page. Here you can scroll in and out for zooming. If you hold down the middle button, you can rotate around like that. And if you hold shift and the middle click, you can pan around just like that. Cool. So what we're going to do is head over here to the top, to the add mesh, and we're going to select the icosphere. Now, before we click on anything, make sure you change the subdivisions here to four. That's just going to add a bit more geometry here. Lovely. Now we're going to hit tab. And as you can see, we have all of these different points here. So it might look like this for you, and if it does, that means we can select each vertice. But what we want to select is the actual face, so the triangle. So if I go over here to the top, I can select face select, and now if I click on this, as you can see, it selects that whole triangle. So what I'm going to do is just drag and grab a couple here, like that. All right, you can make your own shape if you want to make it look like the continents, feel free to do that. So now that I have my selection here, what I'm going to do is head over here to the object property properties and I'm going to hit plus on the vertex groups here and I'm going to hit assign. So what that does is when I click off of this, I can always select that group like that. There's my selection. So now I'm going to hit alt and E and we're going to extrude along the normals. So I'm going to repeat this step a couple more times. So again, I'm going to select a couple more here. We're going to create a new group for it and we are going to assign it. And again, you can rename these as well. I'm going to pull it out a tad bit and that's that. Now we're going to head to the material tab here and hit new. Perfect. And we're going to select the water here. So we're going to pick a nice bluish color. Now, if you cannot see any of this, head over here to the top at the material tab. There we go. So let's pick a nice light blue. For the land, what you can do is head back over here to your group and I'm just going to select this. If you can't see the option, head over to edit mode by hitting tab and then you are able to select that. I'm going to hit the plus icon here, new, and we are going to add like a dark brownish color here like that. Perfect. If you cannot see it, hit assign and then it should reflect. So that's all we really need from here. So we can just go here to file and export this as a GLB GLTF. Next up, we're going to head into Spline, which is kind of like Figma for 3D. Very similar to Blender. It's a bit more simplistic, but what it allows us to do is easily create interactions between the models that we create and also easily integrate it into our website. So let's get started here. We're going to create a new file and we're just going to import that GLTF in straight into our project. The reason we're using Blender for modeling is you currently cannot assign a color or material to only a specific part of the geometry. So, so there we go. We're going to head over here to the left and get rid of this rectangle. So what I'm going to do is click on the icosphere and here press the state button as well. Now for the base state, what I'm going to do is just scale this all the way down to zero. You can just type in zero here actually like that. And then for the reveal, I'll just name this reveal. We can push this back to one like that. What else I'm going to do is head over here to the base state and I'm going to change the Y rotation over to minus 360 degrees. And that's it. Lovely. So now we can add an event as well and you can specify here when you want to run that. So when a variable changes or on the at the start uh, when it actually gets rendered out on the screen. So that's what we're going to do on start. We're going to add a transition here. We want to target the icosphere and I want to do from the current state, whatever it is, to the reveal. Perfect. And the time is going to be 1.5 seconds. And there we go. Now, just for a second, let's head over here to the reveal state and let's adjust the lighting. So as you can see, we have a couple of materials here. So let's head over to the first one. What I'm going to do is bring up the lighting to 100%. And now let's select the light and hit reset transform. So now we can move it just maybe up here to the side like that. You can also control the intensity of this. So we'll bring it up to maybe 1.2, but we can also bring down the world like lighting, the ambient lighting. And that 
you can select if you just click on the empty space here and we can go to light and let's bring this down to 0 0.2 ish maybe just so it's quite dark on the other side of the planet now you might be saying to yourself hey ed this 3d stuff is really fun how can i learn more about geometry and textures and how the world of 3d works well fear no more because today's sponsor brilliant has you covered with hundreds of different lessons on computer science uh, 3d geometry and let's be honest it all boils down to maths it's so funny because my wife absolutely hates math but ever since i've shown her brilliant we've been going through the foundational math just for fun and we've been playing it like candy crush and i think that's the game changing thing about Brilliant is that it just feels like a game. It's so fun and interactive and all the lessons are bite-sized so it just feels like a level that you're going to. And I highly recommend this 3D geometry course on Brilliant as I think it'll give you like a good solid start on understanding 3D. So thank you Brilliant so much for sponsoring this episode. You can check out the link in the description down below for a 30-day free trial plus 20% off the premium subscription. All right let's head back to the video. Let's also create some trees. Now Again, you can do that in Spline if you want. It's just much easier to do it in Blender, to be honest, and you're much more flexible as well. So let's hit Shift A, and we're gonna add a plane. There we go. Now, if you hold the back deck, you can view all the angles. So I can go top here, let's zoom out. And I can hold, I can press G and just move this to the side for now. S to scale it down. We're gonna go really small like that. Okay, let's zoom in, rotate this around. We're gonna hit tab, extrude by pressing E. And let's just go up quite a bit, like that. Cool, we're gonna hit extrude again, go up. And now we're gonna hit S for scale. And let's move that like that. And we're gonna hit control B, which is gonna allow you to do some beveling. To the right, a tad bit, as you can see, that adds a bit of beveling, cool. Now we can increase the amount with the scroll wheel. We'll keep it at three. And there's our little tree. So again, to assign colors to it, you can do it the same way as we did, where you can select specific faces. So in this case, I'll just select all of this. We're gonna go to the material section, hit new, and we are gonna pick a nice brownish color like that. And maybe decrease the intensity of that like that and hit assign. Now let's drag in our tree. And there we go. Well, I also dragged in the, the planet, so let's just delete that for now. And then we can grab the tree and just scale this down quite a bit. And again, if you're not happy with the colors, feel free to go here and mess around with them. So I'm gonna increase the lighting to 100%, and let's also change the color up a bit. As you can see this tree new here, it's basically a group. Um, if I move it around, it's, the origin point is gonna be here. So what I want to do is just get rid of that. So I'm going to take out the plane from this grouping like that and delete this tree new like that. Perfect. And from here on out, I can regroup this again. And as you can see, the origin point is going to be in the center now. So if I start scaling this down, it's going to scale from the center point. However, I might still not want that. So I can hit control alt on the group. And then from here on out, I can move this origin point down at the bottom there. Now what we're going to do is actually complete our planet animation. So, so we're going to add a new state here and we're going to call this close up. So let's scale this up a tad bit more to like 1.5 or 1.4. We're going to rotate it a bit around as well and just adjust to something that you like. And rather than doing this on the start, what we can do is add a new event, and this is gonna be on mouse hover. And on mouse hover, I wanna run a transition for the icosphere from the current position to the close up. And there we go. And now we can take the trees and just position them on the plane here. Now again, in Blender, this would be quite easy, but here we're gonna have to manually do it, but just bear with me. So let's select the plane here, the group, and start moving it around. Again, you can use these gizmo tools down here at the bottom to help you adjust it. So I'm just gonna go to the top view, put it there, do the left view, bring it down until it's flush with the terrain. So let me just keep looking. So well, that's not too bad. Maybe what I want to do is just tilt it slightly to the right. So let's select the plane and the rotation here. We're going to do the Z and just tilt it a tad bit to the right like that. 
So now we can select this group up here and we can create a state for it as well. So let's head to the base state and this one is gonna go all the way down to zero. So let's do zero. And on the reveal, we wanna push this back up to, well, basically any size you want. So maybe something like that. Now remember when you're copy pasting, so if I take this tree example and copy paste it, and let's say I wanna move it here, um, the base state's position is still gonna be there. So be very, very careful. So essentially what you wanna do is copy the base position of that and move it over to where this one is. We can head over back to our icosphere and on the mouse hover here, I can add additional actions. So this one's gonna be tree and we're gonna go from current state to the state here. Again, this is, you can rename this to reveal. And I'm gonna change this to a spring. This is gonna look really cool. And the delay is gonna be 1.2 seconds. And I'm gonna add a different delay for all the trees. And let's have a look. There we go, cool. The problem is when I take the mouse away, look at that, the delay still applies. So what we can do is change the delay here to start only for the both of them. And now it's not gonna run only at the beginning, but not on the exit. See? And finally, we're just gonna apply a tad bit of delay for the planet. So I'll do 0.2 and I'll change this to end. So now it's instant to hover. However, when I take it away, it's gonna take a second for it to revert. The wonderful thing about Spline is that it has a large community and people post stuff and they have assets that you can get as well. I searched Cloud because I found a really, really nice one. So shout out to Gokan Cool for this awesome cloud with rain animations on top of it. So we can get this. If we hit Remix here, it's gonna add it to our projects and then we can import it into our own planet project. There it is. Let's grab the cloud rain, Control C. Let's hop back to our project and hit Control V. And for the initial position, I'm just gonna move it to the right here and to the side like that. And the final position is gonna be right on top of the tree. So I'm gonna put this back to zero and we are gonna move the position all the way to the middle there, lovely. Let's also scale it down a tad bit, just like that. Let's go back to the icosphere here and on the mouse hover, again, we're gonna create a new one and this is gonna be the cloud rain. So we're gonna do from the base state all the way to the reveal. And we are gonna add a delay to this, we'll do one second. And again, we're gonna do delay repeat start. And the easing is gonna be spring again. And I'll also add 1.5 for the time. I'll also try on the base state here to bring the scale down to zero on all of them, like that. And let's hit play and try this again. So hover over, there we go. And finally, what you can do is just change a couple of world settings. So if we head over here to effects and enable that, we can head over to aberration and turn that on and do maybe 20 to 25. Bloom is gonna add a nice glow to it, but let's bring that down so it's not as intense, maybe around 40. I also like to enable hue and move the colors a tad bit to the right, just so it's not as intense. Now if I head over here to text, you can also add that. I changed this to save the planet. You can position it any way you want. I'll put it here. And again, you can animate the color of this if you want. If you just disable the lighting on it, you can create a base state where you start off with the text on zero and you can fade it slowly in for the reveal. And now it's very easy to just go to export. We can head to place settings and disable orbit, pan, and zoom. So the users cannot do that. We can leave a spinner animation as well whilst it's loading. And then all we need to do is just copy this link. And now in your React project, you can install spline tool from React Spline and then just paste over your link in here like that. And there you go, you have a fully animated 3D interactive website. Thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you enjoy this. I promise I'm having the next JS course. It's almost finished. Please hang tight. Uh, it's gonna be well worth it. Uh, let me know if you wanna see more 3D stuff anyway, cause this is well fun. Okay, bye.